go to Castleman State College. Um, and, um, you know, as a grateful dad said, it's been a long, strange trip. But, uh, but here I am back. Um, and uh, thank you for showing up. Um, and yesterday uh, in, uh, in Bill's class, we were talking about iPhones and whether, um, you know, whether it was valid to take a picture with an iPhone or not. And last night as I was going home, uh, my wife and I have a house about, about two hours south of here. Um, I passed a set of greenhouses with ultraviolet lights. Uh, so this was a picture that was taken at about, um, uh, uh, about quarter to seven last night. So I just wanted to show that as a, you know, as, as a kind of in, introduction that, you know, it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing, keep your iPhone with you, keep a camera with you, which I do, I always have my camera with me, um, and, uh, you know, and try to take pictures all the time. Um, you know, it doesn't mean have the same quality of a camera, but I think it's kind of a neat image. Um, so. Uh, with that, um, I'm going to get to uh, the issues at hand, hopefully. Okay. So, um, I took my first photography class at, well, I didn't take my first photography class. I started doing photography at Castleton. Uh, during my junior year, I studied um, with a professor named Douglas Stafford, who was a professor of philosophy. Uh, and I took an independent study from him in the philosophy of art and aesthetics. And Dr. Stafford said, you know, if you're going to study the philosophy of art and aesthetics, you need to know something about art. Makes sense. Um, and I'd never taken an art class. Um, I wasn't a particularly good student, and, and in those days, art was for good students. Um, and so uh, I borrowed my girlfriend's camera, and I borrowed her car, and we went um, from the headwaters of the Hudson to the Adirondacks to New York Harbor over the course of a week. And, and I, I, took, I shot four rolls of film, which it was like nothing, but it was, you know, it was a big deal for me at the time. I had the pictures developed at a drugstore. Um, I brought them back, um, and I put them into um, a, a crudely made book. And that kind of set the tone for everything that I was going to do over the next 50 years. And so, I don't know, if, hopefully you know that I have a show in the art gallery right now. And um, what I decided that I would show you today is outtakes, things that um, didn't make it into the show that I really like. And this first image uh, was taken in Maine um, a number of years ago uh, at, a, at an art school called Scout Hegan. Um, and those of you that are uh, art majors, um, it's a place you should know about. It's a summer residency program. Um, they only accept 60 artists, they get artists from, young artists from around the world to apply. I used to be on the board and I was up there and I was walking through a field and somebody had make, made a, a, a fake cow. And um, it amused me and a certain amount of my work is, is, um, is based on being amused. Um, the other thing that it's based on is, um, is uh, um, symbolism. So um, you're driving down the road and at night it's dark, you're on a highway, and two miles in the distance you see the glow of the golden arches. And you know what that is and you know that you're going to stop there, you're going to get a hamburger and a milkshake or whatever. Um, there is a lot of information that we go by kind of subconsciously and we don't look at. And some of it's interesting, some of it's funny, 
Um, some of it is um, moving. Um, and part of my process is observing that stuff. So this is one of my favorite photographs. Um, it's a lousy photograph. It has, it, it has a lot of problems with it structurally. That car just shouldn't be there. Um, but it is, and I don't care. Why don't I care? Because that's Lorraine Motel. Now, what's the importance of the Lorraine Motel? Um, in 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King was killed there, was assassinated there. So um, about 10 years ago, seven years ago, my wife and I went to Memphis. There's a civil rights museum in this building now. Um, and it's an amazing museum and it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. And when we came out, you know, I went back to take a picture and then I saw this um, sign that says, gentrification is an abuse of civil liberties. Um, you know, which spoke specifically, you know, to one of the things that Dr. King was talking about. Also, there's a little poster up on the telephone pole um, about a lecture about Dr. King. Um, and so you have this seemingly innocuous photograph. You know, it, it, in some ways it doesn't look so interesting. But then when you start reading what's in the photograph, it becomes more interesting. So I'm not going to talk about everything as much. Um, I've spent a lot of time in the South. One of the things, when I was, when I was a kid, um, uh, I, I grew up with a single mother. Um, my mom divorced my father when I was four, and we moved back to the family farm in Burlington. And um, about the only thing that ever made my mother happy uh, was um, going on road trips. And, uh, and guess what? All these years later, nothing makes me happier than going on road trips. So, so this is a picture taken in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, the, uh, uh, the figure behind the fence is uh, Andrew Young, uh, who was a great civil rights leader in, 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 in the uh, uh, 1970s. And I just thought that there was something about you know, where we are now and what's going on with civil rights that um, you know, it was just interesting to see him behind the fence. Um, this is a, a sh shot in West Virginia. Um, you know, a monument to war hero, and there he is with, you know, CVS and Sunoco and whatever else, you know, that, that the, uh, uh, you know, the original intention of, of, of the statue is somehow lost with all of the chaos in the, in the, in the background. Um, this is Mount Rushmore, and um, when I retired, um, I started making lists, and one of the lists um, that I made was um, where I'd been to, and, and I did states and countries, and um, I discovered that I'd been to 44 states, and uh, I said, you know, I have time now, and I'm, I'm going to go to the rest of them. So uh, in relatively short order, I went to those, those final six states, and South Dakota was one of them. Um, I was coming around the back side of Mount Rushmore, and there were people that were um, rock climbing. They were climbing these rocks. And I stopped to look at the rock climbers, and I got out, and you know there was George Washington. And I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, here is a, uh, an image of uh, Ronald Reagan in Branson. Um, there's, there's an artist who's, who has done life-size, well, dramatically larger than life-size sculptures of, um, of all of the presidents. And this was just sitting out uh, in, the, in, in this yard. Um, this was in Arkansas, right across the Mississippi from Memphis. And I just liked this dog. He was, he was on a mission. And I just, um, you know, kind of interest to me. Um, along the Mississippi, and those are honeybees gathering on a sign. Uh -huh. 
Uh, one of the things I've done in my travels is I have been photographing streets named ISIS. Uh, you know, right now one of our great enemies is the Islamic State, and one of the acronyms for, for, for the Islamic State is, is, is ISIS. Um, there are, in you know, almost city in every city in the country, there's an ISIS street, and so I have a whole series of photographs of ISIS, and this one was happened to be in LA, and it's, uh, you know, I can't even read it. Uh, no sleeping, no camping, no loitering. Um, so, um, this was um, in Utah, um, in a little town called Bluff, um, and uh, this was at a, at, a, at a Mormon historical village, and I just like, you know, restrooms, relief society. <laughs> Seemed like a pretty, a pretty funny. Um, this was in, uh, off the highway in Pennsylvania, and there is a sign that says, smile that you're in Pennsylvania, and then there's a monument to a mining disaster where hundreds of people died, you know, both beneath the ground. <laughs> um, Mitchell Ven Veterans Park in South Dakota, um, and Mitchell, South Dakota, if you're ever going through <laughs> South Dakota, is the home of the Corn Palace. Um, the facade of the building every summer is made of corn and they change it. Um, it's really quite amazing. Um, but I like this, so this is a veterans park and you know, and, and the park is obviously dug up. So a little pun. I just like the way this looked. Uh, you know, the two stacks with the two yellow posts. Um, I'm also really attracted to the desert. Uh, this was uh, in California, um, and it was um, at a place called Slab City, the last free place in America. And Slab City um, is a combination of the Road Warriors and Burning Man. And it's made up of people that are just like living there and living off the land and um, or living uh, not off the land, it's the desert. Um, it's, it's quite an extraordinary place. I, one of the, the, the coolest places I've ever been. Uh, just like this shop. Um, this is someone's grave on the side of the road um, in California on the edge of the Mojave Desert. Um, and uh, I don't know, have you, have you guys been through Fair Haven for mm -hmm. one? Yeah. Yeah. And have you seen that house with all the pink flamingos? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, the you reference. Photograph that house. I'm sorry. Have you photographed that house? I have, but never successfully. Uh. Oh, you know, I. Well, I'll show you afterward. I, the first thing I did was I, I projected a photograph that I took last night with my phone. Oh my God! I just, just for you. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm a little late getting here. Bob, is it okay to move the cursor out of the picture? Sure, how am I doing that? I'll just move your mouse and move it off to the side. Where's the mouse here? Oh, here it is. There it is. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is another picture from Slab City. Um, this is somebody's home. They have a solar car. Um, it's pretty cool out there. Um, this is Salvation Mountain, which is right by um, uh, right by Slav City, and somebody made a mountain out of hay bales, um, and then covered it with canvas and painted it. Um, and in my show, there's another there is another photo from from Salvation Salvation Mountain. Uh, again, a really a cool place. Uh, this is in Greenwich Village on Gay Street, and. Um, Somebody came and, and placed a cross uh, because Gay Street is, is, you know, supposedly, you know, it's close to the Stonewall Inn, uh, which was uh, where there was a great rebellion in the, in the late 1960s, early 70s. Um, people saw the cross and decided that they would take and paint it the rainbow. Um, which I think is just really great, and I just stumbled across that. And, Am I uh, crazy if I read that um, sort of 
utility warning cone over there. It's like a Dr. Seuss cat in a hat hat. Right. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of that. Um, I would have, I've been obsessed by the Mormons. Um, and I'm not sure why, but, I, but I've been obsessed by the Mormons. And so we have uh, been to a number of Mormon places. And, and um, this is in Palmyra, New York, uh, which is uh, due west on New York State Thruway, almost to Rochester. And this is where um, Joseph Smith discovered the golden tablets uh, that uh, gave him the story of the, the Book of Mormon. Um, and every year they do a summer pageant um, and uh, with 800 people on the stage and it's amazing, it's really amazing. So this was a, just a photo that was taken before the, um, uh, before the, the pageant. This is another photograph that, it's, it, it's a terrible, terrible photograph technically. Um, but it's an extraordinarily interesting photograph uh, because um, this is all about artistic interpretation. So up at the top, um, have you guys heard of Lucy? Do you know who Lucy is? She was the, the first human humanoid found. Um, so that those are her, those are uh, replicas of her, the fragments that were found. And then these are five different artistic interpretations of what she could look like. Huh. You mean she could look like any one of those? Yes. You know, just based on the skull, on, on, on the skull fragments. Um, and so I think it's a it's a it's a great it's a great piece about don't believe everything that you see. You know, um, you know uh, that that. Um, um, how do I say this? Uh, that everything is open to interpretation, and um, there is a creation museum in in West Virginia, and this is a picture uh, from the creation museum. Um, and this gentleman is talking about how the um, uh, the dinosaurs are the work of the devil and were planted on Earth by by the devil. Hmm. Um, and I just, I love the juxtaposition of the television screen with the, uh, with the dinosaur. Um, this is a picture from the Natural History Museum in New York. And um, I just thought, do any of you guys know who Woody Allen is? Yeah. 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 Do you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, no. Yes. Um, I, and somehow this reminded me of a shot out of Woody Allen movie. It just, there was something about the, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the mute, you know, dinosaur with the kids in the background. I don't know, it struck me as well. uh, Okay, we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna look at art a little bit. Um, this is, um, there's a new museum in Los Angeles called the Broad. Um, it's named after Eli Broad and it's his collection. Um, he built this extraordinary building to house his collection. And, um, um, and so this was a picture taken at the Broad, actually, my wife, early on in her career, worked for him. Um, this is Jeff Koons, um, who's an incredibly important artist in New York. Um, he had a retrospective at the Whitney Museum, uh, and this was a photo that was taken um, at his retrospective. Uh, one of the things, I, I go to a lot of galleries, and I go to a lot of museums, and um, I go there because I, you know, there's a lot of art that moves in deeply, but there's something about the contemporary art market. Um, there's a lot of it that's, that, that, that's, that's really absurd, and I find just um, amusing. So this was at a show called Freeze, which um, takes place in both London and New York, and this was the New York version. Um, this was a slow day, you know, the guy's looking at his phone, the woman's holding her eyes, uh, and then you've got these, you know, absurd store, storefront Indians in the, uh, um, <coughs> another, an, another photo, I mean, the, the, you know, the guy's looking at the eyes, the woman's looking down in disgust. Um, I didn't know at the moment when I took this picture whether this was really a person um, or whether this was a sculpture. 
Um, it turns out it was a sculpture, and it ended up um, in a museum at the Metropolitan at a in an exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, this was a show that was at Mass Mocha um, last year. Have you some of you guys been to Mass Mocha? Yeah. Yes. So it's a it's a museum that's not so far from here. It's about an hour and a half away from here. Um, it is physically the largest museum in America. Um, and um, it doesn't have as much work as the Museum of Modern Art, but it, it does a really great. Uh, it, and it's, it's what's known as a, 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 this is a German term, a Kunsthalle. They don't have a collection, they have changing exhibitions. So, unlike the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan Museum, you know, they don't have a lot of objects in storage. What you see is what's, what's there. Um, another art fair, art fair. What's happening in that picture? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, these two people uh, looking at, at the, uh, virtual reality. <laughs> and, um, and the thing that's interesting is that each, each of, the, um, uh, each of the, the, the VR units are playing different things. Ah. So they have their head under the, the same unit. Uh, but they're seeing different things at, at, at the same time. Um, this is at the Carnegie Museum in, in, in um, Pittsburgh. And uh, it's kind of hard to see this, but uh, this is a, um, a show by a really important Chinese artist whose name is Ai Weiwei. Mm. Um, and these are the signs of the zodiac. Um, and it's, it's, it's an extraordinary, extraordinary piece. Um, but I loved, there is this little guy in the baseball hat, and you can't exactly see his eyes, but his jaw is dropped. He's like, hang on. Let me just turn, sorry. Oh, I can't, I can't turn this off, can I? Oh, I can silence it. <coughs> All right. Um, this is another art fair, and um, Fred Wilson is a is a really great African American artist. And, uh, and actually a, a, a friend of mine. And um, I just love the juxtaposition of the, the figures and then the blonde, blonde, blonde woman in, 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 the, in the background. Um, this is at, a, at the, at the uh, Whitney Museum in New York. And if you look on the right hand side in the back, you'll see the reflection of a, a a large Urs Fisher piece, and this uh, this this figure was about ten feet tall, made out of wax, um, and there was a wick in the top, and so during the course of the exhibition, um, it gradually melted away, um, and um, you know I just love the juxtaposition of the kids looking at their phones with this uh, with this figure that is is turning to dust. This was at the Museum of, of, of Modern Art. Um, have you guys seen 12 Years a Slave? Yeah, yeah. so um, the, the person that directed that was a guy named Steve McQueen, and he did this installation last year at the Modern, um, <coughs> uh, where he flew around the Statue of Liberty. Um, and uh, so it was a comment again on you know, the politics of now. Uh, the woman uh, is a woman named um, uh, Moji Akindi. She's Nigerian, um, and um, and I just saw her, and she looked so beautiful. I took her picture, and we we've subsequently become friends. And um, uh, I don't know, it's just one of those great experiences that you have sometimes. Um, this is um, at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, um, and this is uh, an uh, and an exhibition by uh, 
uh, a pair of German artists named Vasily and Weiss, um, and um, just love the guy. And the, I, one of the things, I have so many pictures of people taking pictures with their phone. Um, I think that that might become a book at some point. Is that normal? No, it, it's, it's Plaster Paris. Um, one of the things that, they, that, that they've done is, um, everything they do is, well, one of them is long, no longer with us, completely non-precious. So they've done works in raw clay that they've never fired. Um, they're, uh, they're very much into um, making fun of the preciosity of art. So um, just a photo in a gallery downtown. Okay, shifting gears again, and we're back on the road. Um, these were fireworks containers um, in Arkansas. Um, back to the art, I guess they're out of order. Um, this was in um, St. Louis. And, um, you know, just love the juxtaposition of the statue uh, Dave Donald Bachelor statue uh, and the guy walking in the, with looking at his phone in the other direction. Um, this is in Springfield, Missouri, um, and this is at the Abraham Lincoln uh, Museum. And uh, you have young Abe on the right, uh, and then a young guy about young Abe's age coming out of the restroom on the left. Um, this is. Um, I don't even know what to say about this. So this is at a, a shop window on Fifth Avenue in New York. There is a there is a um, a, a handbag company called Fendi, um, and this is a forty thousand dollar bag. Oh um, and um, yeah, Titian was an important uh, artist, and so they did this whole series of bags based on artists and you know fashionable ladies walking around in New York or you know, are carrying these bags. Well, probably not now, because this was taken about a year ago, so they're now out of style. <laughs> um, just a New York street scene, love the bear. Um, this is Branson, Missouri, and you know, another street scene, this is almost like Las Vegas, everything is artificial. You've got the construction guys, you know, kind of looking at the mini golf course. Um, I love this photo. Um, you know, the guy's looking at the VR and he's got three cute girls behind him. So more kind of selfie photos. These are these are guys taking pictures of each other in Hawaii. You know, um, taking pictures in the, um, in the Badlands in um, South Dakota. Uh, looking at his phone, I I love this guy. You know, Mr. Captain of the Universe with a ill-fitting suit, his <laughs> uh, you know, and the Nintendo, Nintendo bag. You know, he's got his, his pants are like three inches too long. You know, but he's he's like Mr. Dude. This is at Rockefeller Plaza, um, which is our great monument to capitalism. Mm -hmm. Um, street scene, um, I've taken a lot of pictures of standpipes there, um, and uh, you know, somebody just got creative with this. Um, I love these, these were two trees at a funeral parlor, and I just love them, that's all. Um, another pun, um, so we've got sprinklers throughout the building, but you know, got, the windows are bricked up and you can't get in. Um, basketball <laughs> on, on the ground and, you know this is you know this is both a, you know a, it's for me a really fun uh it, 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 it's fun because it's a pun but it's also fun because it's beautiful you know it's like um there's a um important artist uh teacher who taught at yale um joseph albers <laughs> and he wrote a, a a book called the interaction of color and he did hundreds and hundreds of paintings which were squares around squares and this um, this basketball backboard is a, is a true homage to Albert's custom meat. Um, you know, Lord knows what that is. <laughs> um, 
Patriots Armory, you know, um, you know, arming, arming Patriots. Um, <coughs> down in the South, Dixie General Store. I was actually afraid to take to get out and take pictures here. <laughs> it was it was an act of courage to, to get out and walk around and nobody came came out with a gun to stop me, so it was it was good. Um, pet area, uh, I don't know, just found it amusing. Oh, so this photograph was taken two weeks ago in Montana. Uh, a buddy and I went out fishing uh, for um, a few days, and and, um, and you know, as we were traveling around, I took a, a few photos, and I just I just put these in here in the next few photos just to show you that it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, I was on a fishing trip, and I found things to photograph, wisdom. Um, Donald Trump turned right at this sign. Hmm. <laughs> um, usually open. <laughs> I have no idea, because that's all there was in the sky. <laughs> um, Livingston Mead, and I just, I just love this structurally. I love the colors. Um, they don't show up so well on the, on the screen. But. Um, oh. Social protests. I, 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 um, I photographed a bunch of the um, the anti-Trump protests. This was a pro-Trump la uh, lady right against um, uh, Tiffany's, right around the corner from Trump Tower. Um, Tyranny and company. <laughs> Um, so, most recently, I've I've, I've started. I, I'm not well. I haven't doing as much traveling, but I but I but I've started photographing my neighborhood in the country. And so, this is East Chatham Food Company, which is about five miles from where, where our house is. Prime rib tonight. Cook wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a, a abandoned Best Buy store. And earlier, we were talking about the McDonald's sign. I was talking about the McDonald's sign. And this to me is like the perfect example of that. You know, I don't know if you guys have Best Buy in Vermont, but, but that, that blue sign is iconic. That's, that's their sign, and, but the Best Buy has been taken away and it's just, I don't know. This whole, this whole mall is basically abandoned at this point. Um, again, in the neighborhood, <laughs> Chicken farm. Um, this, to me, uh, it's a pet grooming. It, it, it looks like you know meth lab and <laughs> and pet grooming place. It's just, you know, again another another place that I wasn't quite sure if it was safe to get out of the car. <laughs> um, and finally, from these, um, this is a, a, a Buddhist temple. Um, outside of Binghamton, New York, and um, it's this really extraordinary place. It's this Lao, Lao Ocean um, Buddhist temple, um, and uh, this is one tiny um, structure on a huge, uh, huge um, set of buildings. Finally, I wanted to show you, we, uh, again, we were talking about, about uh, yesterday in Bill's class, we were talking about iPhones. Um, and um, uh, I try to take a photograph every day. Um, and, um, you know, most of the time I have my camera with me, but occasionally I don't. Um, and, but I always have my phone with me. God forbid we would be without our phones now. Um, and so, um, I'm always taking photos with my, with my, with my iPhone. These are right around my house. This is our backyard. That's our backyard. And our backyard. And our backyard. And I think that's it. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? 
Yes, sir. So, um, hi, I'm Bill DeForest, I, in case I don't know anybody here. So, hi, Bob. Thanks for showing, hi, Bill. So, it seems to me like as I'm watching these, like, I feel that there's this, like, you're playing with this tension between, like, how full up life is with all kinds of stuff, and yet an incredibly empty feeling. And I felt for some reason it was never emptier than the people taking pic the pictures of people taking pictures. It's almost as like there's a like the stuff around them is even emptier, like the searching and, and then but the last pictures, the landscapes, and even it's just very empty. They felt the fullest to me. So I wonder if, if that sense of chasing this sense of emptiness, the words don't fill the emptiness up, they just pointed out the pictures in Branson, but there's the, 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 the general on the horse seems like he's slouching towards this landscape of defeat with all this consumer stuff in it. Is, is that emptiness something that you seek or feel? Is some of them balance the emptiness? Some of it, some of them seem to really call it out. I felt, you know, just sort of, you know, some of them made me feel super lonely, even though there were these human structures. You know? is, is that a thing, the emptiness versus the fullness? Well, I think there, there are a couple, there are a couple things there, and and one is, you know, in the reference reference to the phone, um, there is a. When I was at Castleton, um, in one of my literature classes, I read a, um, uh, a book of poetry um, by Robert Lowell. And um, there was a um, poem called Beyond the Alps. And it's, it's, it's about Lowell taking a, a, a train ride through the Alps. Um, and he uh, said in the poem, there was a, there was a simple line that says, Life changed to landscape. And when we are focused on our phone, when we are <coughs> walking across campus, when we are walking down the street, and we're looking at our phone, and we're not looking what, what's around us, that's where the emptiness comes from. And so that's, that's part of it. Um, Part of it is, I want, I want pictures to be open and ambiguous, you know, and so by backing off, you know, I mean, uh, remember yesterday I showed you, you know, some pictures that I took in the public schools, and so, mm -hmm. you know, I know how to photograph people. This isn't about people, this is about people as objects. Yeah. You know, this is, yeah. the, the, the people as, Compositional elements in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a photograph more than the people themselves, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's that's the other part of it. Thirdly, you know, when I do these road trips, I mostly do them by myself um, because I like to get up before dawn. My wife likes to get up at the crack of nine, <laughs> um, and um, so um, the only way that I can because I want to be out for first light and last light, because that's when the best light is going on. Um, and so, you know, I, and when I did North Dakota and, and, and South Dakota, I was on the road for three weeks. Um, I love my wife, I miss her, so I get lonely, and it undoubtedly, you know, gets reflected in the, in, in the pictures. Anyone else? Yes. How about a yeah, student question, sir? Where to next? Where to next? Well, um, again, I'm photographing my neighborhood. I've really just started doing that, and I'm and I'm really so. In terms of um, what I'm doing photographically, that's what I'm doing photographically. Our next trip is Australia, New Zealand. I'm going for five weeks in the spring. So, a little fly fishing. Yes. Yeah, I was curious about, it seems to me that uh, language and meaning, meaning of, of, of words and also juxtaposition of the words with each other, it seems like you're, you're, you're fascinated by that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious if you could touch on um, language, meaning, maybe some aspects of semiotics, because this, this, it seems like it's embedded in there. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that. That's the core of what I'm doing. You know, I was a lit major, so language was important to me. 
Um, and at the same time, um, I really, the way that I relate to the world is visual. Um, and, um, and so, you know, there's a line in, in, in and I'm sorry to do this, but, but I, these, these, are, these, are the, these are the references for me. Um, there's a line in T.S. Eliot, the, it's one of the last lines of The Wasteland, uh, where he says, um, I have shorn these fragments, and this is a paraphrase, I have shorn these fragments against our ruin. And these are all fragments to me. And I feel like part of our culture is being lost. You know, um, that there are too many Walmarts, there are too many Kentucky Fried Rats, there are too, too you know, there's, there's too much of that and not enough that's authentic. Um, and what I'm trying to do is to, you know, is to say, is, is to um, acknowledge some of what's left. Yes, sir. Larry photographers or art, um, current contemporary artists that inspire you? Absolutely, um, and and that's a that's a really good question because I think that you know all of you. I don't care what your discipline is. You should be looking at your heroes, um, and there are there are there are a lot of people that that I look at. I think the person that and I mentioned this in in, in Build for us um, uh, photography class yesterday. Um, there's a guy named William Eggleston, um, and he's been around for a long time, and uh, and I have been aware of his work for a really long time, um, but I'm only now starting to to um, uh, to be able to look at it. Um, and what I said yesterday is that he photographs nothing. You know, he he um, they are snapshots from his daily life. And yet, they are so amazingly dense and complex, while seemingly being really simple on the surface. Um, and I don't know how to do that, you know. And so I look at it because I want to figure it out. Because if I, if I can figure it out, it will make my my pictures, my photographs, that much richer. So. Um, and I said this yesterday also, um, you guys know who Picasso is, right? Everybody? Yeah. So Picasso said, um, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Um, and uh, so I do a lot of borrowing. Yeah. Yes, sir? Uh, what's your favorite yeah. place to uh, photograph? Do you have a specific Wherever I am. <laughs> Wherever I am. And you know, and, and the other thing that I'll say is that I I try to photograph every day. Um, you know, you all know that we have good days and bad days, and um, and even on bad days, I you know try to make myself go up, go out um, because if you just sit around waiting for inspiration, you know, you're wasting a lot of your time. And the one thing that like the iPhone pictures. Um, those are all just like, you know, I'm out in the yard, you know, I've, I, you know, I've been, you know, working on the, on, on the wood pile or, you know, doing whatever I'm doing, and all of a sudden I look and there's a light, and I, and I take a picture, and then, you know, I've got something that reminds me of, you know, how incredibly beautiful it is, and, you know, and how lucky I am to be alive. You know, and, and 30 seconds later, I was cranky, and sweaty, and you know, so wherever I am, you know, and I, you know, I mean, it kind of, you know, the, the illustration of that was the first picture I, I, I showed, showed the, of, of the greenhouse that I took last night. It was like I was going home from here. I had, I had tried to go to Rutland. All the hotels were sold out in Rutland last night, so I drove back to our house. I was exhausted. I was hungry. I was cranky. Um, and I come around the corner, and there are these magenta greenhouses. And I'm like, oh my God, you know. And I stopped, and I and I and I took a picture, and 
You know, and the other thing that's interesting is that I couldn't have taken that picture with my camera. I'd have a tripod, you know, I couldn't make a decent exposure. The phone allowed me to do that. You guys have been great. So thank you for listening. Um, it's really a 